What's up guys, it's Max Merck here, and now it has been a little bit over two years since I have purchased my 2012 C63 AMG. I purchased it with around 130,000 miles. So in those two years, I've put almost 25,000 miles on the car, and once it does hit a little over 155,000 miles, I can apply for the high mileage award, which uh, Mercedes-Benz USA sends you a little badge you can stick on the front, you know, saying high mileage award, and. 155,000 miles, or I think it's kilometers on the badge. But let's just say some of those miles were easy, some of those miles were a little bit of hard miles. Uh, but I have done a lot of work to this car in those two years, uh, whether it be myself or whether it be my mechanic. And to be completely honest, I've kept track of all those, but I've never added all those expenses up. But in this video, I'm gonna be doing an oil change, pretty much a summer, end of summer service on the C63, as well as tally up all the expenses that I have spent on this car for the past two years, pretty much what it has cost me to run this car. Now, I used to do oil changes every 5,000, but ever since I tuned the car, I've been doing oil changes every 3,000 miles. And I do get all my oil and parts from FCP Euro. If you're not familiar with FCP Euro already, they do offer a lifetime warranty. As you can see, some of the oil spilled out on the way, so I have to clean that up. Uh, but they do offer a lifetime warranty on all their parts. So pretty much what I've been doing for all these cars is I use their lifetime warranty on everything, down to the oil, oil filters, everything. So if you're not familiar with how that works, you purchase a product from them once, use that product, and then when you need the replacement product, you order the replacement, and then you have to ship back the old part, which they will refund you for. So that's been a huge help to me over these past two years. I mean, I'm a college student. Uh, you guys, YouTube, are really able, are what's able to make all of this happen, which I appreciate and I'm so grateful for. But this SCP Euro has been a huge help and really reduced the costs of owning a high mileage C63. And you know, I do all the oil changes myself. I try to do as much as I can myself because labor is one of those areas where you're gonna spend a lot on these cars, uh, especially if you take it to the dealership or I mean, you're better off finding an independent mechanic or doing a lot yourself. Also, while I am servicing the car, I will explain a couple things that I have learned over the past few years owning this car and some of those common M156 things that you'll run into, especially as they uh, get up there in miles. It's very common for these cars, uh, low mileage or high mileage, that they will start ticking. And I see it all the time in the forums. Mine's done it before. And everyone jumps straight to the uh, lifters. Or, well, it is the lifters, but... Uh, or the cams or the cam adjusters um, those tend to wear down in these cars and in my experience whenever I've had this like I said I'm on all original engine internals the original cams original everything at 154,000 miles and the car runs great doesn't tick uh, in my experiences whenever it has ticked it was either low on oil or it had the improper oil in it and by improper oil I mean somewhere down the run of these cars mercedes changed the oil spec from 0w to 40 to 5w40 and in my experiences running 5w40 along with a couple additives that i'm going to show you guys one of them is a hydraulic lifter additive uh the engine of this car has really quieted down especially being on original cams everything i mean i've seen a lot of people on the forum say all oh, these additives are snake oil the oil 5w40 0w40 doesn't make a difference and in my experience that just has not been true so without further ado, let me jump right into the video and I'll show you guys everything and explain it as I go. Pretty much my ritual that I do every 3,000 miles oil change ritual, all the additives I add, and break down what it has cost to run this vehicle over the past two years. Okay, so I just drove the car around for a couple minutes just to get the oil temp up, warm it up so the oil can uh, drain better. The first step I do is use the Liquimali engine flush. Now all these parts I bought off of FCP Euro, I'm not sponsored by them. If I wish I was, uh, but I'm not. That's just where I get all my parts because of their lifetime warranty. So this is the engine flush. You're supposed to pour it in before you start the oil change uh, and let the car idle for around 10 minutes. Uh, and this is supposed to go in there and clean some of the deposits and uh, just make the oil drain better. I've been doing this for the past two years. The car has been running great, quiet. On the back it says contents of one can are good for three to five liters. So I usually put around one and a half to two cans of this for the 63. Now we let the car idle for around 10 minutes, let the engine flush do its job. All right, now as you guys can tell by the mess around me, I've gone ahead and drained the engine oil, changed the oil filter, as well as changed the air filters. Now I'm ready to add back in some new oil, as well as these additives that I'm gonna go ahead and explain right now. The first additive is Liquimali Ceratec. 
Now, if you haven't heard of Ceratec before, it's Liquid Molly's product that basically acts like a ceramic coating for inside of your engine. Now, once again, I'm not sponsored by them. I've just been using this for the past two years, and it has made my engine a little quieter. And I've done my own research, and it does seem to help. Now, ideally, I should be putting in almost two cans of this because one can is good for up to five liters, and the C63 takes around nine liters. But each of these bottles runs almost $30 and they also recommend that you're supposed to add this every 30,000 miles. Now, I change my oil every 3,000 miles, and I'm also an idiot, so I buy Ceratec and add it every time, mainly because this engine is so high mileage, 154,000 miles, where I think what's a little bit more money for additives if it should protect and extend the life of the motor a little bit. That's the first one. You're gonna wanna go ahead and shake it. As you can see, it's a very light color. Now when you add these additives, you want to make sure that you're compensating for them when you add oil. So I'm adding a total of around 1.2 liters of additives, so I'm going to have to make sure I deduct that from uh, how much oil I add. And with these C63s, there is also probably about a quart of oil in the oil cooler. Uh, there is a separate drain plug for the oil cooler, however I do not touch that because on the first oil change, if you guys haven't seen the videos I've done when I first bought this car. I drain the oil cooler and the main oil pan and the oil cooler drain plug actually stripped so whoever, whoever was there before me or whatever happened when I went to go put it back in it was just stripped and it would just spin and pieces of the drain plug came off and uh, my mechanic told me that is not supposed to be touched uh, and as well as the AMG private lounge online I saw in one of their bulletins they also say for the M156 you're not supposed to drain it some people say, oh, you're supposed to drain the oil cooler too, but that's really up to your own risk. But in my experience, it damaged the oil cooler and I just do not touch it. Whatever it is, it's probably around a quart or less of oil left in there. It's a pretty, pretty negligible difference. The next additive is Liquimoly's MOS2 engine treatment. And this is supposed to reduce the friction on the engine, inside the engine, amongst the uh, different parts. And uh, it may be a little redundant adding this along with the Ceratec, but like I said, this being a high mileage motor, uh, I know these won't do any harm to the motor. At best, they'll help. At worst, they do nothing. So I always go and add a can of MOS2 as well. Now what I would call the most important additive for the M156, I add Liquimoly's Hydraulic Lifter Additive. And as I was mentioning in the beginning of the video, uh, whether you own an M156 or not, uh, it is very common for these to start ticking or on cold starts you'll hear a cam adjuster rattle and people automatically jump to your cam adjusters have gone bad or your lifters have gone bad or your camshafts and have worn down. But like I said, this is 154,000 on the original camshaft, cam adjuster, lifters, everything. Uh, and I have experienced ticking noises and I do experience the rattle on startup uh, but whenever I hear ticking it was a result of being too low on oil or that it's time for an oil change and every time I've gone ahead and changed the oil or topped up those ticking sounds have gone away and the cam adjuster rattle on cold start has gotten better now I must make this clear that this is just in my experience this was a one owner car before me who I know took good care of it so if your car has not been maintained and your cams have actually worn down or your cam adjusters have gone bad this will not fully fix that this may just mask a sound but if you are experiencing noises before you go ahead and replace anything I would recommend checking your oil level making sure you have the right type of oil in it as well as giving this hydraulic lifter additive a shot and if they don't do anything for you, then you probably need to go ahead and replace whatever is causing those noises. But in my experience, adding these has made it gone completely away. Now we're ready to go ahead and add our 5W40. So as you can hear, I have topped off oil to where it should be now, and for a 154,000 mile motor, there was no rattling on startup, no ticking on startup. Okay, so now that we are done with the oil change service on the C63, let me run down what it has cost me to run this car for the past two years and 25,000 miles. So from 130,000 miles to about 154,000 miles. So I've got the breakdown of everything that has been replaced on this car under my ownership and how much it cost. The first thing was the front left brake caliper that went a week after I bought it. Luckily the Audi dealership where I bought it from covered it. Otherwise that would have been $1,200 out of my pocket, but luckily they covered it, so $1,200 out of their pocket. 
The next thing is the oil cooler, which I did after I tried draining it and the drain plug was stripped. So that was a $385 part. My buddy and I did that ourselves. A new tie rod and an alignment is next. That ran me about $300 at my independent mechanic. Now, before I move on with the rest of the items, I should make clear that if I didn't do the job myself, I gave it to my friend who's actually a Mercedes specialist and has his own independent shop. And like I said, we're actually pretty good friends, so he does give me a special rate. Uh, a lot of the prices that I'm gonna give you, if they seem too low, that is the reason. But if you're not working on these cars yourselves, I would highly recommend finding a trusted independent mechanic. You're gonna be much better off that way than taking it to the dealership or stealership as I would like to call it. Especially once these get old and the miles get up there, it, the dealership is not your friend. I did the left daytime running light myself. The part on that was about $150. Uh, I went in there and did that myself. Spark plugs, also did that myself. And the parts on the spark plugs ran about 80-ish dollars. Next was the transmission service, which I gave to my uh, independent mechanic. That ran me about $300 parts and labor. So like I said, uh, if it's on the lower side, that's because he's giving me a special rate. Next are the motor mounts, and I opted to go with the East Coast Euro upgraded motor mounts. There is a separate video on my channel on those, which I will link. Those ran me about $650, almost $700 uh, parts and labor installed. Of course, the upgraded engine mount is going to cost more than a OEM engine mount. And then I also had uh, my shop install it and once again, gave me a good rate on the labor. Next, I spent about $400 getting the OEM 18-inch five-spoke wheels uh, straightened out. They were a little bit bent. I had a company, a mobile wheel repair company, come and straighten all four of those out. They did that for about $400. I had my mechanic replace the right valve cover and valve cover gasket. So uh, if you didn't know, on the 2011 plus oh, M156s, so once they revised the head bolt issue, uh, they did give, they did cut some costs and we got a plastic valve cover as opposed to the aluminum valve cover on the preface lifts and they are prone to cracking. So on the right side it cracked and was leaking, uh, the left side was fine. Uh, so my mechanic went ahead and replaced just the right side cover and gasket and we will tend to the left side when uh, that arises. So that ran about $360 total uh, parts and labor uh, at my Mercedes specialist. Next were sway bar links, $120 installed, parts and labor. I paid $1,250 for a SunTech partial paint protection film. Uh, that was also, he did give me a special rate because it was an old coworker from when I used to work at a dealership. Passenger airbag recall was done free of charge at the Mercedes dealership. I replaced all eight injectors myself. Uh, that ran me about $140 off FCP Euro, which is really low. Now, uh, when I recently checked them, they were around $300 or something like that, maybe more, I think. Uh, but I saw them on clearance for $140, bought them immediately. If you weren't aware, these M156 cars do have an issue with the injectors. I don't know too much of the details on this issue, but I have seen it happen to others on the forums. Uh, it's not that common, but it can happen, and if it does, it's catastrophic, but essentially they'll get gunked up uh, and, and won't work properly and hydro lock your motor. And I did mine with around 150000 on it, and they were pretty gunked up. Um, I was glad I did it. The job took me uh, pretty much the better part of the day. Of course, I took my time, did everything slowly, and of course, you know, I'm just a DIY, kind of doing it at my own pace. Next was the differential service. So my car does have the limited slip diff from the factory. Uh, that cost me about $80 at my mechanics. Let's see, I went ahead and I lubricated the sunroof on my own. Uh, that was pretty easy. You know, I bought the OEM Mercedes sunroof lubricant. You can go in there with a brush and kind of uh, lubricate all the tracks. Uh, my mechanic did the belt and tensioners. That cost me $350, $350 parts and labor installed. And now let's talk tires, because on the C63, that's a different story. I've been through a set of Pilot Sport AS3 Pluses. Uh, that cost me about $600. I got them used, uh, but in great condition. And then another set of Pilot Sport AS4s now. Uh, that ran me about a grand. Once again, I did get a special rate from a friend who has a tire shop. I uh, got those brand new. And that's actually it, guys. I, I don't know why I was expecting more. I was kind of dreading this for no reason. That's not too bad. Uh, mainly with this car is just gas. I mean, it absolutely guzzles gas, uh, but we all know that. Yeah, so all in all, pretty much just regular maintenance and wear items. Besides that, the car has been great. It's been a great two years and 25,000 miles. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.